Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of the NMAP primer. In this video, we will be looking at firewall evasion, spoofing, timing and performance, output formats, and other miscellaneous options such as verbosity, debugging, IPv6 scanning, and runtime interactions. Let us recall that we tried using some stealthy techniques to scan the target by using scans like TCP Synth Scan and Idle Scan and trying different scans to understand intrusion detection system or firewall between attacker and victim. We learned FIN, NULL, XMAS scans to understand the response to the flags set in the packets we crafted using NMAP to determine the state of the port that may be shown closed or filtered. but Trying out different scans and studying responses gave us a close approximate to the actual state of the port. Similarly, we will learn to detect and bypass firewalls for a particular scan using advanced firewall options provided by NMAP. We will kinda play an attack defense game as an attacker and an network administrator. Attacker has to find open ports to exploit and admin has to secure them. The lab setup is the same as the previous video. Let me show you the lab setup once again. I have a Kali Linux box here with an IP of 192.168.181.140 running on the Ethernet 1 card. And a Metasploitable 2 box with an IP of 130. Ubuntu machine with an IP of .134. Let me show you. Yeah, 134. And an XP machine with dot 132 now i'm going to listen on port 80 on the ubuntu target machine so let me do that by typing in sudo netcat listen on port 80 so now it's listening on port 80 i'm going to go to my attacker machine and run an nmap scan and do a sin scan and I'm going to perform that on port 80 and the IP 168.181.134 sorry is the Ubuntu's IP. Now before I perform the scan let me run my Wireshark and listen on it. So I'm going to press enter and here we see that the port is open. Let me stop the capture. So if you remember a synth scan it establishes a half open connection. So what happens is we send a syn packet if the port is open the target sends back syn ack and we send a reset packet because we do not want to establish the connection so here we see that the port is open now what if the network administrator wants to secure his system he wants to improve the security of his system so now he sets some firewall rules he sets the rule to reject all incoming syn packets so let me go back to my ubuntu machine as the network administrator open a new tab and use the tool called IP tables. Now this table, this rule is used to set um, firewall rules. So here what I'm doing is I'm typing IP tables and hyphen I is used to append a chain. So it's input chain. That means all incoming traffic hyphen P is protocol on T that is TCP transmission control protocol and TCP flags that is all sin packets J is an action so we reject all the sin flags then we reject it with TCP reset now if I enter this command and I add this rule to the IP tables firewall what happens is we perform the same scan again let me remove this capture and capture again on the same card perform the same scan here you see it shows closed now you see how smart the network administrator was what he did was as soon as we, as we sent a send packet he replied with a reset packet making us think that the port was closed to bypass this firewall rule we will use scans with different flags set to discover if the port is actually open let us try a fin scan. So I'm going to do nmap hyphen sf to do a fin scan on port 80 and the target. Okay. 
so let me stop the capture and start again you see that the port is open filtered with fin null xmas scans if a port is open it will always show open filtered because if a port is open the target does not respond it's the same if it's behind a firewall also so if i show you the capture here we send fin packets but we don't receive anything in reply not a reset packet nothing so that either means that that actually means that the port is behind the firewall because we don't receive a reset packet um, i can show you that it's we get the same result with null and xmas scans too so instead of hyphen sf i'm going to do hyphen s n for a null scan and we get the same result and instead of an sn i'm going to do an sx an xmas scan and we get the same result so the network administrator gets to know about such scan with fin flag set so he sets another rule he blocks the fin flag too so the same way we blocked fin pack sorry sin packets we're going to do uh, the same thing with fin fin flag so now if we try to perform fin scan it won't work so now it says closed the reason it's saying closed is let me show you the oops i didn't capture yep let me perform the same scan now you see that we we send a fin packet and then the target sent reset so that means it's closed but the network administrator being smart he act he was the one who sent the reset packet keep in mind that the network administrator only blocked the fin flag not the null and xmas scans so if we perform a null or an xmas scan it will still work so i'm going to perform a null scan and it still works it will work with the xmas scan too because he only blocked the fin scan now the network administrator reads every day and gets to know about null xmas and fin scans so he he's getting smarter by the hour and decides to block them all at once so he uses data length to reject the fin null and xmas scans so let me show you the packet sizes of some packets here we can see some scan techniques the flag exchanges data length that is basically the packet size and time to live we see that TCP uh, connect scan has a packet length of 60. Sin scan 44. Fin null and Xmas scan all have equal packet lengths, that is 40. So the network administrator now knows that fin null and Xmas scans have equal packet sizes. So he blocks all packets with the size of 40. Let us do that by going to the Ubuntu machine, and let me first remove all the previously set rules. I'm going to do that by issuing this command and ip tables hyphen f is basically flush flush is removing all the rules on this input chain so I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to issue the command to uh, to reject all the packets of length 40 so this is I'm appending to the input chain protocol is tcp and reject any packet that has a length 40 and reject with tcp reset so i'm going to press enter and go back to my kali machine and try out the fin scan before that let me start the capture so i'm going to perform a fin scan and you can see that the port is closed here now if i show you the size of the fin packet it says it's 54 but it's actually 40 If we go to the uh, information here in the Internet Protocol version 4 information, you see that the total length is 40, but it shows 54 here because let me explain. So 54 is equal to so 20 bytes of TCP header data. So if I go back to the capture, here you can see that the header length is 20 bytes. So that is this 20 bytes plus 20 bytes of data. plus the other 14 bytes remaining are the ethernet data so 54 bytes is 20 bytes of header length 20 bytes of data 
and 14 bytes of Ethernet. So this is how it works. You can try out other scans like null scan. It shows closed. Even with the Xmas scan, it will show closed because it has the same packet length. Now remember that we removed all the previously set rules. For example, we, we are not blocking the sin, sin flag uh, anymore. So if we try the sin, sin scan, it still works. We see that it still works because we have not blocked any packet size that uh, has 44 uh, length. So sin scan basically has 44. Oops, let me show you the. Yep, you see that a sin scan has the data length of 44, not 40. We have only blocked 40. So 44 still works. Now even a TCP connect scan works. So if I do a TCP connect scan, that is T and perform the scan, it should still shows open. Now let me show you the capture. So here is the first transaction of our SYN scan where we send a SYN packet and we see that it's 58 but it's actually 44. You can do the calculations yourself <laughs> and next we see that we do a TCP connect scan. Here we see that the length is 74 but the, the actual length is 60. The, that is the extra 14 bytes of the Ethernet. Even in the previous sense scan, it is a 14 bytes of uh, Ethernet added to that. So it's not blocking 60, the firewall isn't blocking 60 bytes of packet length or 44 bytes of send scan ka pocket, uh, packet length. So that's the reason these two scans still, uh, still works. Let's also block the TCP send scan and the connect scan by going back to the Ubuntu machine and issuing a similar command but instead of 40 bytes, let's put 60 bytes for the TCP connect scan and 44 bytes for the TCP send scan. Go back to the Kali machine, perform the same TCP connect scan and we see that the port is closed. Now if we perform the send scan, we will also see that being closed because we're blocking, blocking both of them. Now, we can bypass the length restriction by using an option called data length that Nmap provides. So that's gonna be Nmap. So that's gonna be Nmap data length 12 or 10 or anything. And the type of scan, let's do a fin scan on port 80 and the IP. So what we are doing right here is we are appending 10 bytes of data to the fin scan. So that will be fin scan is 40 bytes plus the 10 bytes that we are adding. Now let me capture the uh, caption on Wireshark. Now it shows open filtered. Now I'll show you why it does that. Why it says that it's open filtered because here we send the fin flag now the total length is 50 bytes where it when it should be 40 bytes the firewall is only set to block 40 bytes of data but not 50. so because we are appending 40 plus 10 bytes of data it does not block the fin packet so that's how we bypass this uh, data length restriction another useful option to test the firewall rules is fragment option as the name suggests it fragments the packets into smaller parts and sends them. Remember that a TCP header is of size 20 bytes. Let me show you again. You see that it's 20 bytes here. So what fragmentation does is it splits the TCP header or the packet into three parts. So let's say the 20 bytes is divided into 8 plus 8 plus the remaining 4 bytes. So let us perform a Frag, uh, fragment uh, option. So let's do a uh, fin scan and provide the hyphen F for the fragment option and perform the same scan. Let me go capture on Wireshark, removing the existing capture, then capturing it and then perform the scan. Now if we observe in the capture, we send a fin packet with the size of 38. Now here it says that the total length is 24. The way it shows 24 is, 
so the total length is 38 right so 38 is equal to 20 bytes of header length and 4 bytes of the fragmented data plus the 14 bytes of ethernet data we also see that the scan did not bypass the data length restriction the fragment option is used for stealth rather than to bypass a firewall rule this option may not work with modern firewalls and IDS because modern firewalls can rebuild the fragmented packets. But it's still a good idea to uh, idea to sneak some packets into the network and trying our luck. Now, what if the network administrator wants to set the firewall rules according to the time to live? Let me first delete all the rules that I've said before by doing sudo IP tables hyphen flush and the input chain so if we look at the IP tables rules right now I'm gonna list all of them we see that there are no rules and I'm going to set the rule according to the time to live now what this command does is that I'm appending to the input chain any packet with protocol TCP and time to live that is less than or equal to 64 is going to be rejected with a TCP reset packet. So we've seen that almost all packets have a TTL of 64 or less. So this command is going to drop all packets with TTL less than or equal to 64. So let me issue this command and go back to the Kali Linux machine and try any scan let's just say um, a SYN scan we see that the port is closed because it's not accepting any any packet with a time a time to live of 64 if I capture this on Wireshark and perform the same scan here you see that the time to live for this would be 64 and for that it sent a reset packet let me show you the time to live must be yeah here you see that it's 46 that is less than 64 so it has rejected it with uh, a reset packet now what if we want to bypass this restriction of time to live so all we can do is specify a simple command that uh, nmap provides do nmap hyphen time to live and specify anything greater than 64 let's say 65 and on port 80 and the IP so now we see that the port is open so this is how we can bypass a time to live restriction. The next option we can play with is the source port. The network administrator decides to block all incoming traffic except for the traffic coming from a particular source port. So being the network administrator, I am going to block all the TCP uh, traffic. Then I am going to specify a role that accepts traffic from source port 1337 and accepts it done now if I go back to my attacker machine and try doing a normal sin scan it shows that the port is closed because it is rejecting all other TCP traffic now if I actually mention the source port I can mention a source port by doing a hyphen G and the source port that is 1337 now this is a guess let's say the attacker was able to guess the source port so now if I perform the scan knowing the source port well here you can see that it shows that the port is open next is a decoy scan in this scenario the network administrator seems to be aware of some malicious activity so he sets up a logging system in the firewall to log the traffic so that he can find the culprit let me go to the Ubuntu machine and use IP tables to set a log now IP tables can be used to set a logging system too now here I've set the log prefix as attacker log and then enter the command go back to my Kali Linux machine 
And the way you specify a decoy scan is you first specify the scan, then the hyphen D option for the decoy option, and then specify n number of IPs. Here I have specified three IPs. The first one, that is 132, is my Windows XP machine. Then me is a keyword here. Me in the sense it is the attacker machine, that is your IP address. Then it is a Metasploitable 2's IP. Then I've specified the target port and the target IP address. And I'm going to press enter, perform the scan. Go back to the Ubuntu machine and try checking the log. I'm going to check the first, let's say 70 lines. Now, if I go up, We can see that it started with 132. So there are a few IPs here. There's 132, there's uh, 140, then there is 130. So the network administrator is confused here. So I've got three IPs uh, from whom I've got uh, incoming traffic. Who can be the attacker? I don't know. You can't really pinpoint a particular IP address and say oh he's the attacker so decoy scan is helpful in this sense now let's say he blocks all the MAC addresses that try to scan the network so let, let me uh, block one of them let's say I'm gonna block 140 because that's my attacker machine and I am going to block this MAC address The way I'm going to do that is do sudo IP tables input chain and protocol is TCP M Mac Mac source and then the Mac ID and then I'm going to reject it and reject with TCP reset and now go back to my Kali Linux perform a simple uh, simple scan that is sin scan from port 1337 on port 80 on the IP 168 181.134 we see that it's closed but it's not because remember that we uh, we were only accepting incoming traffic from port 1337 so it should have worked but it did not work because we just blocked the MAC address of 140 so that's the reason it's showing closed now the way we can bypass this is we can simply spoof or fake our MAC address by using MAC changer so um, let's first turn uh, turn our uh, interface down. So we'll do that by typing if config. It's an at one card down. Oops, I typed it wrong. Eth one down. Next, I'm gonna do mac changer hyphen r. It's an at one. Now here we see that this was the address that we blocked and this is our new MAC address and next I am going to turn my interface up ETH1 up and MAC changer Yep, now you can see that it has changed to 22A2E04DCAC8. So now this is our MAC address. And if we try performing the same SIN scan again, voila, it shows that the port is open. So this is how we bypass the MAC address restriction if he did block our MAC address. And we've spoofed our MAC address right here. Another way to spoof MAC address is to do spoof MAC and then the vendor name it can be apple it can be dell or it can be xerox or whatever you want to specify there 
or you can specify your own MAC address like 00000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 and so on up to 6 bytes or you can just say a 0 to generate a random MAC address. I'm going to do that and on port 80 and the IP. So here, here you can see that it has generated a random MAC address 7D, 34, 3D, 4B, E and 30. So it has spoofed a MAC address and performed the scan. Similar to the MAC spoofing option, there is another option called IP spoofing option. If the network administrator only allows a specific IP to connect to his network, he would probably set the rule to reject all incoming traffic and only allow traffic from a particular IP. So here I have flushed all the rules in the input chain and now I'm going to reject all the TCP traffic. So sudo IP tables append the input chain protocol is TCP and then reject would be the action and reject with TCP reset. Next I would only allow one IP that is my Windows XP IP. The protocol is TCP and then the source IP that is 192.168.181.132 is my Windows XP's IP. So here I am going to accept it. Accept. There. Done. So if we try to perform a simple SYN scan on port 80, it should show open, right? But it's closed because it's not accepting any incoming connections from uh, any other IP than the 132 IP. So we have 140, it's not allowing. So let us spoof the IP address by doing nmap hyphen e for the interface that is eth1 then the source IP address that is 192.168.181.14 sorry 132 then the destination port that is 80 and the target here we see that it shows that the port is open so we have successfully spoofed our IP address the next option is data string. One way we can play with this option is if the network administrator sets a kind of password for every packet. Let's say packets having the data string password123 are only allowed. So let me go back to the Ubuntu machine and set an IP table rule that accepts all incoming packets with the data string own pass. So PWN pass. Now here algorithm BM, BM means Boyer Moore algorithm, it's a pattern matching algorithm. So let me issue this command and then I am going to block all, uh, all other these incoming packets. So I'm going to reject and reject with TCP reset. So go back to Kali and if I perform a simple SYN scan on port 80 and the target would be 168, 181, 134. Now it says the port is closed but if I perform a data lens scan, sorry data st uh, string scan with the string as on pass and on port 80 and the IP. See, it works because it bypassed the data string. It didn't really bypass the data string restriction. Now, the attacker uh, must be able to sniff the traffic in the network to find the string, right? So, that is one way. Then, next, we will look at the IP app option scan now. Nmap sends 24 bytes of TCP data in the header if you include the 4 bytes of TCP options. So, Basically, it's 20 bytes header. This is header and then 4 bytes of TCP options. 
So if the admin decides to reject any incoming packet with four bytes of TCP options, then he'll implement the following rule. Let me go back to Ubuntu. First, clear all the rules that I've said before. Flush the input chain. Clear my screen. And now I'm going to set the IP tables rule as IP tables input protocol is TCP TCP options length would be four right so I'm gonna reject them and I'm gonna reject with TCP reset so that's what I'm doing here so any incoming packet with uh, TCP options as four that's the size and I'm gonna reject them with TCP reset I'm gonna enter go back to my Kali machine oops do a simple let's do a connect scan now on 192.168.181.134 on port on port 80 we see that it's closed but if we try to append some simple null characters to the um, options we can do that by nmap let me clear the screen and do it nmap ip options then i'm gonna append those hexadecimal characters x00 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 and a star now the star basically fills in the other missed out characters and then the IP address 168.181.134 and the port is 80. So now if we perform the scan it shows that as open. So the asterisk in the end indicates that some null bytes are repeated. So please note that the number of bytes should be a multiple of 4. So if I do something else like if I put um, let's just say x00 another time it shows IP options must be a multiple of four so please note that it should be a multiple of four the number of bytes the next option that nmap provides is bad checksums checksums are used by TCP IP to show to ensure data integrity they ensure that the data sent is full and correct bad checksum option helps us to discover information from systems that may not be properly configured Many modern firewalls now verify TCP checksums, at least when determining whether to respond to a packet to avoid leaking this information. So this technique is more useful for provide, proving that a bad checksum probe response was sent by a firewall. So to know if there's a firewall behind and sometimes there might be information that may be leaked if the firewalls aren't configured properly. Now to to perform uh, to use this option we'll do nmap and do a bad sum option and that the ip so 192.168.181.134 and the port is 80 oops let me check the manual of nmap Here we see that there's no hyphen between the bad and sum. Okay, so the same thing, but without the hyphen in between. Press enter. Now we see that the port is filtered. Well, that usually means that it worked, but the firewall responded in a very weird way. Maybe we did not uh, receive any response. So let's see what happens in the capture. I'm gonna capture on Ethernet 1 and perform the same scan again stop it and let's see so we performed a send scan to which we did not receive any any packet that's the reason it's showing filtered last but not the least when we are scanning a whole network range it's better to randomize the order in which we scan so rather than scanning in sequential order we randomize the scan by doing nmap 
randomize i think it's zeddy randomize hosts and the ip range that is 192.168.181. Uh, you can do a 0 to 24 that, that is 0 slash 24 is basically 0 to 220 sorry 254 or you can specify manually like let's just say um let's say from 33 to um 134 so it's gonna randomly uh, shuffle the ip addresses and do the scan next are the timing templates that nmap provides to control the timing of the scans there are six timing templates that nmap offers we can specify them with the hyphen capital t option and the number 0 to 5 or their name so the names are paranoid sneaky polite normal aggressive insane so it's an order from 0 to 5 now the first two modes are for ideas evasion polite mode slows down the scan to use less bandwidth and the target machine resources normal mode is default so t3 does nothing that is what your normal and map uh, scan does when you don't provide a capital T option next aggressive aggressive mode speeds up the scan by assuming that we are on a fast network insane mode assumes that we are on a very fast network and are willing to sacrifice uh, some accuracy for speed so let's start with the insane scan let's go to the Kali Linux attacker machine and do nmap hyphen capital T5 and the IP address 192.168.181.134 on port 80. Now this scan must be performed on fast networks. I am running the scan from the same network as the target. So it was fast. Here you can see that it took 0.21 seconds for the scan to finish. We also compromise on some accuracy sometimes for the speed. T4 is the aggressive scan. It is also fast, but only waits for 1.25 milliseconds for the target to respond. So the time difference between two packets sent is about 10 milliseconds, 5 milliseconds more than T5. So this won't matter much because it's somewhere uh, around 10 milliseconds. It can be 10 milliseconds or less, even less than that, depending on how fast the network is. So let's do T4. I'm just going to replace 5 with 4. Oops. Here you see that it performed the entire scan in 0 0.17 seconds. That is faster than T5. But in reality, when you're performing like a whole lot of uh, scanning on different ports, n number of ports, it's going to take longer. They'll definitely, T5 will definitely be faster than T4. Here it's just because I'm scanning one port. Let's, let's do it for Metasploitable actually, because there are so many ports available on it. Let's start again from T5. But instead of port 80 or, uh, instead of port 80, we'll be scanning all the ports. So 192.168.181.130 is my Metasploitable 2's IP. So now the scan finished in 0 0.26 seconds. Let me do the same uh, T4 scan for the Metasploitable IP and see the time difference. So here we see that it's 0 0.27. It's almost the same. But you'll see the difference when you're scanning so many hosts at a time next t3 is normal it is a default timing template used by nmap so it's the same as uh, saying one second let me clear the screen screen nmap uh, hyphen t3 and then the ip 192.168.181.130 now you can specify t3 or just leave it. it it's going to be the same but okay let me provide t3 and see the result 28 See, not really, you know, a difference when you're scanning only one host. Next is the polite scan. Polite scans are used to used uh, on a network that is slow or has a less bandwidth. People like to specify T2 just so that the host doesn't crash. This was like way back 
when the internet connection was slow i guess everybody has a good internet speed these days now most of the network these days are fast and reliable so this doesn't make any sense but it makes sense when you're trying to evade firewalls so um not really this can either big if if you're not scanning the entire network you i don't i don't think you'll be using this scan if you're scanning the entire network so let's do a t2 oops i just deleted everything i should have just replaced the 4 with the 2 yeah so let's see the difference see it's taking time here so even after a long time it's still stuck at 8.90 done and the remaining it shows as 6 minutes 6 minutes 19 seconds so that's a long time to go so you see that t2 is taking time uh next is the t1 option t1 is a sneaky so t1 is used for firewall evasion time difference between two packets sent is 15 seconds so this can be used on very slow networks and also to evade firewalls let me escape from this clear the screen and do the t t1 scan now let's keep checking the progress by pressing enter well i am pressing enter it just isn't showing me anything let's wait now there you see it shows that it just finished the arp scan so it's just 0.0% done it just discovered the hosts that are live i mean it just finished uh it just finished the scan where it tries to find whether the host is live or not okay i'm going to press and enter another time doesn't show anything i guess it's going to yeah it shows something it says 0.10% done So there you see it takes a very long time. It's going to be the same with T02. T0 is very very slow. Now T0 sends packets very slow and the only one port uh I mean only one port is scanned at at one time and the time difference between two packets is 5 minutes. Uh see the time difference between T1 and T0. T T1 took 15 seconds between two packets, and now uh, the paranoid T0 scan takes five minutes. So I guess it's just waste of time to even show this scan. We will now see how we can bypass time-based firewall rules using these timing templates. Let me perform a quick T5 scan on my Metasploitable 2 machine, that is 181.130. So we can see in the scan results that the ports from 21 to 25 are open except the 24 port. So I'll go back to the Metasploitable 2 machine and set some firewall rules as follows. So basically what these rules do is block TCP packets from an IP address if the packet count goes more than 1. In other words, the first packet will be responded from an ip address in 1 second so in 1 second if more than two packets try to uh, find out if a port is open or send request to a port well it will drop the other one the second or the third and so forth it will only accept the first one so take note that we are only dropping packets and not responding with a reset packet like before here i've mentioned the action as drop Now if I go back to my Kali machine and let me open a new tab and perform the same scan and map T5 192 168 and do it from port 21 to 25 because if I scan the whole range of ports it's going to take a long time you'll see why So now I'm performing for only ports from 21 to 25. Okay. So here you see that 21 is open as usual, 22 is also open as usual, but 23 is filtered, 25 is also filtered. 
Now we do see that the ports are open and also filtered. This is because we are scanning more than one port simultaneously. The target responds to the first packet and then doesn't accept the other packet at the same time. Because there was no response, we are unsure whether the port is open or filtered. Here the 23 port that is showing filtered or the 25 port that is also filtered. It shows filtered because when we uh, when we send a SYN packet, it does not respond to it. It does not respond with an acknowledgement or a reset packet to tell it's open or closed. So basically no response. That's why it shows filtered. The reason it shows uh, that it's filtered is because we have tried to send uh, too many probes in one second. So it only responded to the first probes in that second, not the other ones. So T5 uses max retry set to 2. Let me show you that in the browser. Well, here you can see that T5 uses maximum and maximum retries as 2. So it will try, it will retry to receive response from the port two more times. Therefore, when we scan the first port, it responds that it responds and we know that it's open. And the next two are filtered because it just replied to the first one. So some accurate results, but we did compromise on the other ports because it was trying to finish the scan fast. Now we bypass this using the max retries options. So basically it's the same option. So we'll go back to Kali Linux and go to the previous tab, clear this out. Perform the same scan, but with the max retries option. So since T5 uses, well, two, we'll use four and see how the result varies from the normal T5 scan where the max retries is two. Oh shit, I, I wanted to see it takes a long time if I scan the whole port range. So let me specify the port from 21 to 25. Well, max retries is the maximum number of retries. So we'll increase the max retries uh, to more than T what T5 used, that is two. So we, we have just said the max retries to four. So now you show now now you can see that it shows the accurate result. 21, 22, 23, and 25 are open. 24 is closed as usual. So these are pretty accurate results because we have increased the maximum retries to four. No, now the other way is to is to use a timing template which has a greater time difference between the packets or has maximum read more maximum retries so if i go back to the same uh, nmap page you can see that t4 has six maximum retries t3 t2 t1 3 t0 all have 10 as maximum retries so let's go back and perform the same scan remove the maximum retries oopsie and instead of t5 i'll put t4 here there you go t4 it's gonna take a time yep so now even now we get uh, accurate results because the maximum retries has increased to well six because t4 has six T3 to T2, T1 and T0 have 10. So there we have bypassed the timing uh, template restriction by the IP tables firewall. Now we'll look at Nmap's performance options. I won't di uh, di uh, dive deep into them since they're options that we use in specific use cases. So let me go back, let me uh, open the manual of Nmap and go to the firewall section i guess firewall oh no timing and performance here it is so the first one we'll look at is max host group that is this one max or minimum host group so here it says parallel host can group sizes 
so what happens in this uh, option is maximum number of hosts to scan parallelly is specified nmap divides the target ip list into groups and then scans one group at a time so if we specify a size of 50 it scans with a group size of 50 we will see the scan results after 50 hosts have been scanned and then the scan will continue we can also specify minimum host group uh, so nmap will try to uh, keep group sizes above that level note that these options do not work during the host uh, discovery phase and uh, the next option is minimum parallelism minimum or maximum parallelism it says probe parallelization so it's basically total number of probes to be sent simultaneously nmap uses this according to the network performance it automatically chooses the number of probes it slows down if the packets are being dropped the number to specify can vary according to the reliability of the network so well it doesn't really matter in this era of fast networks where the internet speeds are good enough but if the load is well high on a machine or server well it's a good option to use and max parallelism can be used to prevent nmap from sending more than one probe at a time to hosts while dealing with firewalls and slow performance issues like we saw in the previous timing template case next is the minimum round round trip timeout and the max so we can adjust the probe timeouts here nmap calculates the minimum round trip time based on the response times or previous probes if the network latency shows to be significant the timeout can increase to several seconds it's better to play more with this option when there are firewalls behind networks it's always good to i don't know play nice with firewalls <laughs> since my target is on my local network i can set the minimum round trip time to a lesser value and the maximum round trip time to a high value next is the max retries which we have already seen in the timing while bypassing the timing templates so it's an option that uh, basically uh, specifies maximum number of retransmissions next is host timeout this is to make our scan faster by giving up on slow target target hosts next is scan delay adjust delay between probes so this option is used to specify the time between each probe to be sent it's usually better to leave this option alone because nmap detects what's best for the network while scanning specify only when firewalls are to be evaded next is minimum rate so minimum maximum rate so this option controls the rate of scanning or the speed at which packets are to be sent specifying a number means that nmap will keep sending at that rate or above packets or above that uh, packets per second similarly max rate can be used to control the maximum number of packets to be sent next is runtime interactions runtime interactions are basically what you do when the scan is actually running so the first runtime interaction option so to say is the verbose option now verbose is v v uh, is the key to be used when we when the scan is running so basically i'm going to perform a scan right now and i'm going to do a t3 scan on the metasploitable 3 machine and i'll tell you why it's t3 in a moment and let me do that and when i press enter i'm also going to press v the small v just the v on the keyboard and you see what happens on the screen okay so basically what i did here was when the scan started i pressed v here so it increased the verbosity to one what does what that does is show you what's happening when the scan is running and then i pressed v again and it increased the verbosity level to two then it increased it to three when i pressed v again now verbosity decreased to 2 when i did shift v that is the capital v and i again pressed v it increased to 3 again pressed shift v that increased sorry that decreased it to 2 
and then one when I pressed shift V again. So this is the verbosity runtime interaction option and the reason I did T3 is it will slow down the scan and give me a chance to actually press the keys while the scan is running. Otherwise it's just boom and it I'll show you. It's that quick. I can't even press keys and show you what's happening. So the same way the next option is debugging level. So that you do by pressing the D. Uh, you can increase the debugging level by pressing small d. That is just the D and then you can decrease the debugging level by pressing shift D that is a capital D. So let me do that. Debugging level increase to one, decrease, 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 decrease to zero. So let me show you. Oh God, so many ports. I hope you got that on screen. <laughs> well, oh God. Okay, anyway. <laughs> It does show this debugging level decreased to 1 when I did shift D and this is what happens discovered close port and all that when I was doing the small D just the D on the keyboard. Next is the packet tracing option. So packet tracing is similar to debugging level but what packet trace does is show you what's happening what's happening with the packets where it's going where it's coming from and which port and all that just like wireshark basically so let me do that and press p this this one's uh, packet tracing is p so press enter p well you see that p and then press capital p packet tracing disabled and then that's done so here you can see that um meta exploitable 2 that is 130 from port 36931 sends me sends to my machine attacker machine Kali to this port uh, reset acknowledge packet so well you can see the IP ID and then the IP length sequence number and so on and the time to live so this is what packet trace does another cool option you disable it by doing capital P Next is the last option that is, well, it prints runtime interaction help screen. So I'm going to do the same option and press question mark. So that's shift and then the question mark. And then that's it, I guess. And any other key, it basically shows what's happening, how much time is remaining, how much is done, how much percentage. So I press enter on any other key, it shows this about 47.94 percent done and then the estimated time and then the remain sorry not the estimated time it's the remaining time <laughs> yeah the same thing but this is not the estimated time <laughs> that's my time <laughs> okay so some other miscellaneous options are uh, ipv6 scanning let's do nmap so then hyphen 6 hyphen 6 is for ipv6 scanning basically right now i don't have an ip address to scan but that's how you do an ipv6 scan so that's hyphen 6 and then the next option is hyphen a so hyphen a is aggressive scan i'll tell you what aggressive scan is so aggressive scan option does an os fingerprinting a version detection that is for services and it runs the default scripts and also does trace route so basically it's aggressive in the sense it's it has more options i mean the scan carries out more number of options so let's do that for our metasploitable option hmm running so late well it's almost done oh the ping scan is done 13% it's taking longer time because it's also running the scripts. I'm pressing enter or you can press any other key. Oh shit, I press P. <laughs> Packet tracing disabled now. I did that with capital P, that is shift P. Okay, how much more time, man? Come on. Okay, 95.65 done. So I'm pressing it. Okay, press any other key than P, V, and the runtime interaction options. Like I just pressed O and it shows 99.90 done.
God, come on. Get done with it. Yep, it's finally done and you can see ton of tons of information here because it ran all the scripts. And here you can see that FTP anonymous login is allowed. That's all the script script scripts magic. Well, this is what happened when, when you do an aggressive scan. It shows the Linux version also. It says it's 2.6. some X version. And it's running a 2.6 kernel. Yep, it also shows whole script results. Hmm. Yep, and the final one is the trace route. It shows the hops, round trip time, and the address. So, Finally, not finally, actually there are some more miscellaneous options. Uh, another would be um, the version number. So this is Nmap's version number. So right now my Nmap version is 7.80. Next uh, is the Nmap help. You can do the manual also. It gives the same result. And well, do the manual. This, this spoils your screen. We'll have to clear it anyway. Next, finally, the output options. So now the op output options are very interesting because that's how you save your results, right? And show it to your companies when filing a report. Well, uh, we, you can do that by doing hyphen O and the desired output. So there are four types of outputs. One is a normal output. Next is the XML format. Next is a script KD format. Next is grappable output. So I'll not show you all of them because I'll directly do an hyphen OA. You can basically do hyphen ON for normal, hyphen OX for XML, hyphen OS for script KD, and hyphen OG for the grappable output. Now I'm doing hyphen OA and this is because, mm, well, it it basically run it basically saves uh, the result in all formats so hyphen oa and then the file name let's do well hacksaw thermic and map and press enter the scan is done and well if i do an ls starting with hacksaw thermic and map oops Well, here you can see that it's the grappable format. This is the normal format, that is the nmap format, and then this is the XML format. Well, it didn't uh, save the script KD format, so I'll do that again and show you. Let me show you the outputs of these files. So cat g uh, dot g n map. There, this is the grappable format separated by commas and slashes. And next is the N normal format, that is the N map. That is basically the result you see in your scan uh, on your terminal. So that's the normal result. Then what's the other one? That then then the XML result. So XML basically uses tags here. So it shows host names, extra ports, uses tags like ports, extra ports, and then so on. Closed state is closed, basically in the XML format. Then, so this was the OA option that I did, which basically outputted to all formats, except the script KD one. So keep a note of that. Let me do that. So hyphen OS is the script KD format. So I'm gonna do SCK, script KD. Press enter, and now, cat sck right yeah there you can see it's in the script kd format where it uses the dollar sign for s and then the e for three i mean three for e and so on so this is how you output your results basically save them in a file and then use them for later purposes i guess uh well, I would really recommend you to go through Nmap's documentation since it's very comprehensive. I hope you liked the video. I hope you like 
to two parts of the nmap primer video stay tuned for more videos like this thank you